Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins step inside the cell, but who will emerge victorious? Hello everyone, it's NLW Fix here, back again with another video. Today, I'm going to be giving you my Hell in a Cell 2022 thoughts and predictions. We've got a stacked card here, featuring some big matches. Some not so big, but that's what we're going to get into in this video. But before I get into my predictions, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe for more wrestling figure content, and comment down below, what are your predictions for Hell in a Cell? So without further ado, let's get right into it. And now we'll come on to a match which I'm quite looking forward to. Here we've got the Judgment Day, that's Edge, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley taking on the team of Finn Balor, AJ Styles and Liv Morgan. I really like the trio of Balor, Styles and Morgan. I think that uh, Morgan can be elevated by being associated with Styles and Balor and the Judgment Day. I've been enjoying the stuff they've been doing in the kind of tag matches and stuff like that. And seeing Edge again in the ring will be interesting to see how he kind of interacts with Finn Balor as well as AJ Styles. Um, with this one though, I don't think that the face team are going to win. I believe that Judgment Day are going to pick up the victory in this mixed tag team matchup. It would be nice to see some intergender stuff, maybe uh, Rhea Ripley going after Styles. And, but then again, Damian Priest and Edge are quite um, large guys. So, uh, you know, the stuff they could do with Liv Morgan might be a bit limited. But I definitely could see Rhea Ripley... Uh, you know, tussling with um, AJ Styles in this matchup. So, yeah, one of the matches I'm more looking forward to on this card, even though it's uh, not really um, as stacked as I might have suggested in the intro. But uh, we'll move on to the next match, and it is for the United States Championship. Theory defends against Mustafa Ali. Uh, Ali, the past couple of weeks, not really looked uh, in the best shape because of the fact that he's been battered and beaten at every turn by Theory, Champa, The Miz. Uh, he seems to be on the receiving end of a lot of beatdowns, and I can't imagine him finally winning the title here. It just doesn't seem like it would make any sense. Although, you know, me personally, I'd love to see Mustafa Ali as the US champion, but I think that they're definitely going to screw him over in some way in this matchup, especially with Theory having Vince McMahon on his side. It feels like, yeah, it doesn't really feel like they built up to it all that well. So I think that Mustafa Ali isn't going to win here. But honestly, I just want to see something more substantial for him. It does feel like he's in a bit of a rut at the moment. Then again, you know, he was off for months and now he's come back. So maybe this is just the company humbling him as they do. Uh, but yeah, I don't see Fury losing here. But you know what? I could be wrong. Next up, we've got Ezekiel versus Kevin Owens. And I apologize for using the Elias figure here. Obviously, that is not Ezekiel. That is Ezekiel's older brother, Elias. Um, but Kevin Owens doesn't seem to think so. And uh, he's been kind of racking his brain over the past couple of weeks, thinking, trying trying to get proof that Ezekiel is Elias and they're the same person, um, even though there's photographic evidence that they are not the same person. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, this is one of my favourite feuds in WWE at the moment, and I did not think that I would be saying that, um, you know, when it first started. I thought it was a bit silly to start with, but they've really kind of leaned into it, and I enjoy it for what it is. I think it's quite funny. I think that Ezekiel, you know, is getting cheers from the crowd, and it's good, um, and Kevin Owens as well can be given anything really and can really run with it so uh yeah with this one though i don't know i think ezekiel will get the win here i think that kevin owens his anger will get the better of him and he's gonna make some sort of mistake that'll lead to ezekiel pinning him but again like owens i think that he's really been carrying this feud and as well as the alpha academy as well shouts out to gable who i think is very entertaining you know i haven't watched wwe regularly in a number of years until recently so gable is fast becoming one of my favorite parts of monday night raw his interactions with kevin owens are really fun and i'm sure this is going to be a fun comedy match and it's a breath of fresh air you know something fun on the card i think ezekiel gonna pick up the win Next up, we've got a two-on-one handicap match. MVP chose this specifically. It's Omos and MVP taking on the Destroyer, Bobby Lashley. And based on the last two matches that Omos and Lashley have had, um, you know, I'm not really looking forward to this one. Um, the cage match was fun, and it would have been a fun way to kind of end this feud, but for some reason, they're continuing on with this. Um, I would have personally liked to have seen maybe Lashley versus MVP instead, but I understand why they're trying to get Omos over. I don't know how this one is going to go, though. I think that Lashley's going to win by pinning MVP, though. That's my prediction. Because Omos, he's got the win at Backlash. Um, and it feels like Lashley, they probably want to push as more of a, a face single star on the show. Um, but again, like I'm not really expecting too much from this matchup. It's not going to be uh, going that long. Uh, so, yeah, I would say Lashley would win by pinning MVP. But, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they had Omos beat Lashley. But the question I have, really, is where does Omos go from here? Because, you know, you've got this big man uh, beating Lashley, but... 
who else on the roster really is there? I guess you could put Almos in there with Ali as kind of the underdog in the US title feud, maybe. Um, I don't. But then again, again, like it feels like a bit limited with what they can do with um, Almos. Like I, I'm trying to think, rack my brain about the Raw roster at the moment, and not really anyone that I can see him facing next. But we'll see. I'm predicting Lashley though to win this matchup. Next up, triple threat action for the Raw Women's Championship. Bianca Belair challenges, or I should say defends, against Asuka and Becky Lynch. We've seen these three women in a multitude of matches uh, over the past couple of weeks. And in fact, this past Monday on Raw, Bianca and Asuka had a really, really fun matchup, I think it was. Yeah, um, they had a great um, back and forth match uh, towards the end of the show, which, oh no, at the start of the show even, which I thought was really good and a good sign of things to come. For this matchup, it's one of the matches that I'm probably most looking forward to other than, you know, the main event, which I'll get to. Uh, this one, though, I don't see Bianca losing at the moment. Uh, Asuka and Becky Lynch, you know, I, I could, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe they give Becky Lynch the belt here. Uh, maybe to kind of... But then again, you've you built Bianca up so much to take it off her so early would be a bit of a, uh, a flat ending to a title reign. So I think Bianca wins, continues her reign. And again, where she goes from here, I don't know. Uh, again, this was supposed to be the spot where um, Naomi, I believe, was the one to be challenging Bianca, which would have been awesome. But um, obviously, they wanted to focus more on the tag team division, but that's another story. Um, uh, then again, these three women, three, probably my favorite three women in the company at the moment, um, maybe in all of women's wrestling, really. Uh, so I think that Bianca's got this in the bag. Oscar and Becky Lynch, though, they're going to make this a great match as well. And now we come on to the main event. The Hell in a Cell match, Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins. If their last two matches were anything to go by, this is going to be fantastic. And, you know, the rest of the card might not be great, but this main event on paper looks absolutely outstanding. I thought their match at Backlash was incredible. And I think that this one is well with the stuff that they've been able to do um, in big match situations. You know, Cody, he's a great big match wrestler. He can really bring it to these sorts of situations. You know, we've saw, seen it in AEW. Um, my question is whether they'll incorporate blood into this matchup. I think that would be a great touch. Um, Seth Freak and Rollins as well. He was in the last Hell in a Cell match, I believe, against Edge. Um, and that one was a, a five-star classic in itself. So this one as well, I'm predicting, is going to be great. Uh, who wins, though? I don't know. I, I, they probably want to keep Rollins strong. However, I feel like Cody... Because he's been pushed so heavily, I think that, you know, he could win all three of the series, and I think that would be fine. I think too often WWE and many wrestling companies actually want to keep, um, you know, 50-50 booking and have both men win, uh, like, an even number of times. But I think that Cody, honestly, have him win here, a clean sweep against Seth Rollins. Rollins can move on from this. He can climb back up the ladder, but I think this is one that Cody should win. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a brutal war. I think that they're going to pull out all the stops to have an incredible main event. Um, if any match should be in Hell in a Cell on this card, it should be this one. If not that, then I don't know. I think they could have maybe had Roman and Riddle on this show, but that might have been wishful thinking. I don't know. But uh, again, they seem to be limiting Roman's capacity as to what he's doing. So for this one, I'm going to predict Cody beating Rollins in a great Hell in a Cell match that I'm very much looking forward to. So overall, a card that isn't really the most exciting, but the main event should be a barn burner and that Raw Women's title match is also tantalizing as well. And you know what? That six person tag could be a sleeper hit. So some interesting stuff on Hell in a Cell. At least it's not going to be uh, five hours like the AEW pay-per-view, at least. Um, but what did you think of the predictions and what are your predictions for this pay-per-view? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to NLW Figs for more wrestling figure content. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. I will catch you guys later.